The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So get ready, nerds, because we're talking coming to America. Thanks for joining us. I am your host, The Salty Nerd, and you're listening to The Salty Nerd Podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing the sequel to the 1988 classic, Coming to America, Coming to America. And I am joined, as always, by my awesome panel of nerds, starting with the Barbarian Space Viking, Matt Vader. What's up, dude? I'm here. You are here. I'm here That is a fact. In America. In America. Where this movie did not take place. That's right. I'm also joined by Jude. Welcome to the show. I, too, am here. (laughs) (laughs) And last but not least, Matthew Kadish. Yes, I'm here too. All right, cool. Two or and, not, and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> this movie didn't go anywhere. All right, let's talk about coming to America. See, I, I knew Alex wouldn't like this because this he's, is not his style of he's humor. Because he's a child. Yes. Every movie that's actually funny, he doesn't like. And every movie that's not funny, he thinks is hilarious. Okay, yep. but you liked <laughs> this movie more than anyone should. Have. The, the, the look this on is his true. Face, the look on his face right now. <laughs> this this is a this way today. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's like Boondock Saints is hilarious, <laughs> man. Hold on a second. You like this movie? I loved this movie. Oh yeah. my God. I am shocked. Kate and me are like, I am absolutely shocked. Bro was falling off the couch. I was laughing, laughing. so hard yeah. at, at parts of this movie. Dude, this is this is classic Eddie Murphy. Oh yeah. Th- this is 80s Eddie Murphy. Oh God. It was totally. great. What are you talking about? Somebody cut his nuts off in this movie. No. no. Oh, you're crazy. Okay. Hey, before I mean, we get into it, real quick word from our sponsors. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you'd like to support the podcast, go to saltynerdclub.com. There you will find our Patreon page, and you can join the uh, Patreon club and get some exclusive access to a lot of really cool stuff that we offer, uh, behind-the-scenes photos, exclusive podcasts, and uh, or early access to our main podcast. Uh, okay, so let's, let's get into this. Uh, Jude, are you doing the synopsis? Mm-hmm. Okay, take it away, Jude. 2021, coming to America. Rated PG-13 with a runtime of one hour, 50 minutes. I could not find any budget information on this. However, I do have a synopsis. King Akeem must pass his throne on to a male heir. His marriage to Lisa 30 years ago has produced nothing but daughters. Thankfully, the royal seer had a vision of Akeem's bastard son in Queens, now 31 years old. Akeem brings his son Lavelle baby mama, and Uncle Reem back to Zamunda with him and start training Lavelle how to be a prince. Akeem's oldest daughter is devastated at being cast aside but helps Lavelle pass his prince tests. Akeem wants to wed his son to the next Dorian princess, the niece of the bride Akeem jilted 30 years or earlier in an effort to link the kingdoms together and avoid a war with Wesley Snipes. Unfortunately, Lavelle falls in love with his Zamundan stylist, and they run away together. As Akeem tries to track down his son, his daughters defend the kingdom from an ang- angry Wesley Snipes, and in defeating him, secure peace between the two kingdoms, making a marriage bond unnecessary. Lavelle comes back with his bride, and Akeem, having learned perhaps it's time for laws to change, declares his oldest daughter his heir to the kingdom, and his son the ambassador to America. Okay. I'm going to tell a story. Oh, God. Oh God. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I had never seen the original. 1988, Coming to America. That explains a lot. I'd it, never it seen does. it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do something a little weird. This probably may or may not have been a good idea. But I watched the sequel first because I wanted to see if the sequel would stand on its own oh, two legs. Oh, like, you wouldn't get half the jokes in no. the sequel if you hadn't seen that. That, to me, seems like a problem. That's not a problem. Not the a problem. movie can't stand on its own two feet. It's a, it's sequel. a sequel. It can't be funny by itself. It has to rely on it, all it, the it, old it, jokes from the first one. Is, yes. dude. I watched the first one after I watched this if one. You, if you, no, no, that's why you. I, hate I, no, it no, so no, much. no, 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 no. There's other reasons why I hate it. I'm just talking about just the comedy itself. You it, are so infuriated. Every I know. <laughs> you do everything hey, wrong. I'm gonna every, watch. I'm gonna watch the Empire Strikes Back before I watch Star. Wars. That movie would stand up on its own two feet. No, it would. Yes, it would. You weak bitch. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch the last season of a TV show first, yeah. and then I'm going to go backwards <laughs> yeah. and watch... The last the, season didn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't know who, I don't know who <laughs> any of these characters are, or any of these throwback jokes, or anything. It's that all, to, that's all this that's movie, what is. This movie yes. is. It's all just throwback that's jokes. That's all it is. That's nah, boring. It's, it's, and it's, it's, it's a boring. bunch of preachy nonsense on top of it. I don't think you're allowed to talk for the rest really of this show. <laughs> The, the preachy nonsense is there, but the it's preachy really nonsense is the listen, only thing that's original in listen, this movie. I went into this movie 
after reading stuff online about all these people, oh, it's woke. Yeah. It's preachy. It's all of this 2020s preachy bullshit culture stuff. And it really isn't. It kind of is. It's, it's very veiled. And it's very. No, it's, it's over no, the top. No, no, it really isn't. Yeah, it is. No, what? I didn't find it over the top at C- all. Compared the first movie, it's the same fucking story. It's exactly the same and that's story. That's all it is. That's that's a terrible sequel. No. I, you're, you're I, I wrong. dude, the first fifteen minutes of the first movie, I watched it yesterday. Freaking amazing! I was laughing my ass off through that whole movie. I mean, I didn't laugh more than maybe twice, and it was I mean, all Wesley you, you Snipes. You wouldn't even get the joke when when Wesley Snipes brings his sister in. Is he still bark standing on? I got the, the joke and- after. <laughs> no no like while you're watching it like there are so yeah. many things in this movie where if you hadn't seen the first one to have context for it absolutely you'd, you you would just be lost it's just it's just callbacks everything's callbacks what's so That's great what about this is. movie is that they brought back so much from i will the give first them that movie, and it's been 30 years yeah i'll give them that all I the mean, re- recurring characters i, are really I would cool. chalk this up as like they made the joke in the movie which was a bit over the top but it was definitely a sequel to a movie that nobody wanted or asked for. It was, it was Absolutely. I, I, I will give him that. Absolutely. But it's still funny. These you know actors, what this is? it's like these actors got together and they made a funny movie yeah. over a couple of weeks. They were over the top. They did everything that they needed to do to pay homage to 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 the first movie. It was kind of the same story. It was kind of the same It's exactly same the same story. Lesson yeah. with a with a modern with its twist. nuts cut off. No, I disagree. Yeah. Modern twist. Yeah. You know what this is? This is a movie for people who have a group of friends that you keep cracking the same jokes for 30 <laughs> years is, and they still hit. This is this is Eddie Murphy bringing his friends together and making a movie like Adam Sandler brings his friends together and makes all those stupid movies that yeah. they make. Yeah. I'll, I'll it's say, the same thing. I'll say this. Like growing up, Coming to America was one of my all-time favorite movies. It's yeah. fantastic. Like, like it, it's hilarious. It's got a good heart to it. It was Eddie Murphy at like his peak. Yes, I and, will agree. And in watching this movie, I feel like they were able to capture that magic from the first one. And I know that there are people out there who will disagree with me on this. But like all the characters came back, all like the the, the jokes landed for me. Like everything that worked in the first movie was brought back and worked in this movie. Like, for instance, Next Doria. Yeah. Uh, the, the country it's near... It's terrible, it, but it's what, funny. Colonel, uh, Colonel Izzy was uh-huh. in the first movie, and then they bring back Wesley Snipes as his son, General yeah. Izzy. And plus, anything with Wesley Snipes in it oh. nowadays, <laughs> like, like it's automatically like top tier for me. Wesley yeah. Snipes stole every scene he was in. He was amazing. Oh, he was great. And it reminded me a lot of of uh, Dolomite is my name because oh, it was the same thing in, in that where Wesley Snipes just like would walk away with every scene. he was Oh, in for, yeah. That. For in that way. Yes. But Dolomite is far superior to this movie. That that's a movie well, I, I could I, go I, on. I mean, Dolomite stands on its own, but this movie, like it's, it's really made for the people who love the first movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, I can understand why you didn't like, plus like you just have terrible taste in movies. <laughs> but, uh, but <laughs> you know, like I, I know people who are big fans of the original who didn't like this as well. So like, I think it's a very divisive movie, but to me, like everything landed in this. That yeah. James Earl Jones's funeral was one of the most incredible things I think like, I've ever seen on. Oh cinema. my god! I want to he have cried. my funeral while I'm you still cried? alive. You cried? He laughed so hard he cried. Oh, what okay. are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like the, James Earl Jones's King character, he decides that he wants to attend his own funeral because he's that boss. Yeah. So he has them throw his funeral my while funeral he's still alive. Let's yeah. do it now. And he gets Morgan Freeman to narrate his funeral <laughs> yeah. and introduce a mashup between In Vogue and Salt and Pepper. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it, it, that was like one of the funniest things where I think I've ever seen on film. I turned to Jude when it happened and I, I was like, Morgan Freeman Cheers. just introduced a mashup between In Vogue and Salt and Pepper. <laughs> And then Gladys Knight sings James Earl Jones out of the, the mortal coil. Yeah. And James Earl Jones, being the boss that he is, he he decides when he's going to die. That's right. He turns to Eddie Murphy. He's like, okay, I'm going to die now. And then he does. <laughs> and and it's just like, like if James Earl Jones never appears in another movie, like this is, I'm, I'm glad that he went out on that scene because yeah. that was such a boss scene. Like the fact that Morgan Freeman is like narrating the funeral <laughs> it was epic. It was so epic. There are a few moments that are really good. Wesley Snipes is a standout character. The funeral thing was over the top bombastic. The music was amazing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But the comedy to me did not hit. And that's not just because I didn't see the original because I did watch the original and then I went back and watched this one and it still didn't land. Everything about the original that was like hard edge Eddie Murphy, 1988, you know, the prime Eddie Murphy is gone in this movie. There's 
nothing of that original version has made it over to this like 2021 safe for work version of, of coming to America. I didn't buy it. I was like, I wanted the edge. Where's the edge? He had the edge in Dolomite. It, it didn't transfer to this movie. And I was like really disappointed that it wasn't like hardcore Eddie Murphy. There was a bunch of nonsense. Uh, what was it? Is it Leslie Jones, the act, the com comedian yeah. from Saturday Night Live? She, people who like her, that's totally fine. She's definitely not my type of humor. She was like nails on a chalkboard in this entire movie. <laughs> I didn't like that they retroactively like changed what happened in the first movie to accommodate this new character. Yeah, that, that, that bothered that, me a lot. That, that was a stretch. And I don't normally like Leslie Jones, but the part where she had the Senate candle that between her legs and she was wafting it, I had to laugh at that part. I, I didn't. I, I thought, <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was a hoe back then. Yeah, you were a hoe. The whole you was a hoe back that's, then. That yeah, bothered yeah, me too. Yeah, like, why? Because the whole message of this movie is like you have to respect women, and Zamunda is behind the times because women can't own businesses, and women are uh, under the boot of men, and blah 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 blah. And then Leslie Jones is like, yeah, I was a hoe back then. I'm like. <laughs> Are we getting our messages mixed here, well, people? Well, well, you know, like the whole the whole theme behind coming to America is that you have to break away from rigid tradition in order to achieve, you know, happiness and enlightenment. Yeah. And in the first movie, you know, he was in an arranged marriage and he decided mm -hmm. to break with tradition and and go and, and find true love. And so, like in, in this movie, like I didn't look at it as woke in the sense that, like, oh, this is a highly feminist message. It, it's that, hey, you know, we're about breaking tradition again and, and creating a, a, an atmosphere of equality in, instead of something, because like, it wasn't like men bad, women good in this movie. It was, it was really like women are being treated really badly in the society. We need to change that and make everyone equal. And to me, like that was like a good message. Like I don't think Eddie Murphy is woke by any means. No. I, I feel like he has a good head on his shoulders in terms of like you know the message he wants to communicate with movies like Dolomite and stuff like that and his resurgence. And I just didn't get the you know the the political messaging in this. I feel like it was just a natural outgrowth of the themes from the I, original. I, I, I wasn't I wasn't offended by the political message in, in this movie. I I know there it was there, but it wasn't over the top. I didn't get you know you know me. I I go to war with these fools sometimes yeah. and it's just i wasn't offended by this movie i i wasn't one so. of the things that bothered me and, and and you're right it's not like i mean i've seen worse preachy movies oh, this yeah. this i mean to me it preached a little bit but it wasn't terrible but what bothered me more was that i felt like in the first movie eddie murphy's character was very much i have to break from tradition i have to pave my own path and then in this movie he's he, they like regressed his character back well, that was to part where of the story too. I, I didn't, I he, was turned like, in, he turned into his dad. Yeah. Why though? He, he should have, but why wouldn't happens. he have continued to that trend of, of paving his own path? Because, because, because there's, there's it wasn't tradition until, his, rule. yeah, it wasn't until his father died that he was actually free to do that because while his father was alive and still King, he was still influenced by his father. And so like a lot of this, you know, there, there's, there's some good father, son, um, Bob, your head a little harder, Jude. <laughs> I can agree. I'm just joking. Or I'm sorry, is that too woke for you? <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> There's some good father-son parallels here where Eddie Murphy discovers that he has this, this bastard son and he's learning how to be a father to a son just and, and realizing like, you know, like his own issues with his own dad. And, and so like, I feel like this was a good character growth moment for Akeem um, going forward because, you know, we got to see him you know, kind of break out of this, this mold that he was raised in, in the first movie. And then in this one, like he did regress, but he was able to, that, that was able to give him the opportunity to, you know, develop as a character. Develop the same thing he did in the first movie. It, it was the same development in the, for the character two times in a row. They had to regress him so that his son from Queens could come in and like show him how the real world was supposed to run. It just didn't, it didn't work for well, me. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of like the fallen hero trope where the, this type of thing they tried to do in The Last Jedi with Luke Skywalker, where you have a character who, you know, completes his arc and then, you know, is kind of like a fallen character where he regresses and has to rediscover what it was that, you know, um, made him a hero in the first place. And in a way, um, his son, hearing the story of his father going to America and finding true love and all this stuff, was the thing that inspired him to become a prince. And then that in turn inspired his dad to become a better father and king. And so like, you know, there, there are some like legit, you know, story elements going on here that 
work on many different levels. But like, you know, while, while, while we were watching this, I just knew that Alex was going to hate it be, because this is not his type of humor. <laughs> no, like he does not like not. this type of uh, these types of jokes. And um, I feel like. But I, lo I love the first movie, though. I watched it for the first time this weekend. And I thought it was fantastic. And, and I think you would have appreciated this movie more had you watched that before this one, because there's so many great gags in this movie where if you haven't seen the first like Louis Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Louis Anderson shows up in, in this movie and token white guy. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but like, if you didn't know who he was from the first movie, you wouldn't get how funny that is. Yeah. I just, in comparison to the first one, like seeing Eddie Murphy go to New York and he's like, I have to be a poor person. I have to know what it's like to be poor. And he goes and gets a janitor job at a rip off McDonald's. And like those were McDowell's. Well, now, McDowell's. Now, 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 now his <laughs> poor son has to come to Zamunda and learn how to be rich. Uh -huh. I, did he though? Yeah. I don't think he did. I think he just was like, no, nah, man, I'm going to be who I am. Whatever. Screw your freaking tradition. And he ran, and it, it was like, okay, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Out in the end, didn't it? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I just, yeah. I didn't buy it. I but, didn't think it was I, funny. I, I loved all the McDowell's jokes. It's oh, like, yeah. it's like the, the McFlurby. McFlurby. We, we put the toppings on the bottom, <laughs> not on the top. <laughs> not, not yeah. on top. And, uh, you know, in the original, it was like, you know, they have, sesame seeds on their buns yeah, and we have, don't <laughs> they have sesame seed. And, and like in the background of, of some of these things when they're in new york you can see like a mcdonald's sign where it says made with real sesame seeds you know <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on the signs and you, you know uh, B babar the elephant that that was another gag that came back where you get to see babar all you know grown, grown up, up. Uh, the fact that like everything is done with pageantry in zamunda where like they have these major dance numbers like wesley snipes i think the military he, yeah like wesley it's snipes. the military dance number <laughs> <laughs> wesley snipes he even said i think it was on Insta his instagram where he was talking about how like like he wasn't there for any of the choreo uh, choreography practices and so like he just made up his dance uh, <laughs> at, 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 you know on the day that they were shooting so like everything that you see him doing when he's like walking you know past his like you know military dancers like that's just Wesley Snipes being Wesley Snipes and stuff um, I don't know everything about this movie I just loved I loved seeing the characters again I loved the gags I loved you know the throwbacks everything about it was, was just hilarious to me I loved it I uh, Jude, you haven't talked in a while. What, what, do you agree completely with, with Kadish? Are you on board for this movie? Um, I did not want to watch this movie. Like Vader said, like this was the sequel that nobody needed. 100% mm. that was me. Um, I was not looking forward to it. I thought it was probably going to suck. And I thought it was just going to be like stupid humor and like trying to force jokes to still be funny. But like I watched it and I actually enjoyed it. And I was surprised that I liked it as much as I did. I thought it was done well. I thought that they brought back um, so many people from the original 30 years later. And I was impressed. And um, I liked it. Did I fall off the couch laughing? No. Did I laugh till I cried? No. <laughs> but I thought it was well done and I got the jokes and, and I was I was happy that I watched it because um, the last thing I wanted to do, like we watched so much for this podcast and it's like, it's it's our job. So we, we watch these movies and a lot of the times we hate them. <laughs> so I was not looking forward to this, but like after I watched it, I was like, that was some time well spent. It was yep. actually entertaining for me so I was, I was happy with it hmm. vader i just enjoy eddie murphy he makes me laugh you know i could probably i could watch a movie for two hours of just the old dudes in the barbershop oh, yeah, I love yeah, the barbershop those guys dudes. are great they're, they're funny yeah. they're, they're, i could do that it wouldn't be any i thought they were funnier in the first movie <laughs> well they, that they were good that they were good. a little funnier back then <laughs> they were way funnier in the first movie but i just you know it was just it was just a funny movie to me. I, mm. I, I didn't go into it with any expectations and, um, I laughed and I wasn't annoyed really with a whole lot. Um, I looked at the wife who is my ultimate barometer for this kind of thing. And I go, what did you think? She goes, that was funny. I had, I had a good time. So there you go. That's there you have it. She's the, she's the every man for this kind yeah, of you, show. You know, originally this movie was supposed so. to go out to theaters but because of coronavirus, Paramount sold the rights to Amazon uh -huh. and made it an Amazon exclusive for streaming. Um, I would have been interested to see like how this would have fared in the box office as yeah. opposed to. I think there's too video. many young people like Alex out there that wouldn't have got it. Probably, but um, this is stupid. <laughs> it's not funny. The first one. Do was you, um, sorry, do you know what the what the budget was for this? Because I couldn't find that. I I don't. Yeah. 
sorry. I do know that like the original um, Coming to America was plagued with problems. Like for instance, uh, John Landis who directed it, um, him and Eddie Murphy did not get along on mm -hmm. set. Like they almost came to blows. Um, but in addition to that, Paramount um, Pictures at the time was like stealing profits and saying like this movie didn't make any money. And so like Eddie Murphy and a bunch of the, the producers had to sue Paramount in order to get them to pony up the money from oh, this how movie. Shady. Yeah, like like it it was it was a big thing and it, it really affected Eddie Murphy's career and it also affected how business was done in Par in Hollywood. It was like this big scandal. You don't have enough money, Paramount. Come on. Um, but with this movie, like when they decide they finally decided thirty years later to make a sequel to it. Paramount was actually on board and apparently the production went really smooth. The guy who directed um, Dolomite is my name. Eddie Murphy had a good time working with him. And he was like, Hey, would you like to come and direct coming to America? And the guy was like, yeah, sure. So it's the same people who made Dolomite is my name. Uh, they got James Earl Jones to agree by basically like they had to go to James Earl Jones's house because he didn't want to travel and they shot everything with him without Eddie Murphy or any of the cast there and then just like edited it in That's uh, amazing. Later on. <laughs> just, just so just so they would get James Earl Jones to come back for the movie. Okay. And uh, uh, one of the funny things is like we're just watching the scene here. So like the white guy that um, the son is interviewing with for a job at the beginning, they showed that painting of of his uncle's. Yeah. So, um, in uh, Eddie Murphy did a movie with Dan Aykroyd called Trading Places. Mm -hmm. I love that. And movie. those were like the those were the rich uncle or the rich guys from Trading Places who, in coming to America, they, they were two poor people. They, they were two yeah. homeless guys that Eddie Murphy gives like a dollar to and then or a hundred dollars to, and they're like, "We're back on on our way to no, the did, top." Didn't he give them a whole? He gave brief, them a stack, a briefcase yeah, full uh, of uh, okay, so, so he, he gave them all this money, and then they go and and reclaim their fortune, and the racist guy. In, doing the job interview is their nephew yeah. in this scene. And like, like that's, that's the type of callback where like most people wouldn't get that. Yeah. I, I got it. I love trading place. That's one of my all time favorite Eddie Murphy. Well, movies. But did you notice it when you were watching this movie? I didn't notice the freaking background. No, the, yeah. the picture picture on the wall. I know I got it immediately. Did you? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and also, um, Eddie Murphy originally wanted Tracy Morgan to play his son and Arsenio Hall was like, Dude, you're like the same age. <laughs> like, like, like I have to put my foot down. We're not doing this. And so like they I had thought to, Uncle Reem was funny. Yeah, they had to come up with a part just for Tracy Morgan because they wanted him in the so, movie. Okay, Tracy, we need you to just be yourself. <laughs> That's all he is. Yeah. He's just himself. The uh, only thing that that irritated me about this movie was like how um like in the beginning of the movie, Lavelle is like he's like well put together and he's well spoken and he knows how to behave in like a job interview. And the second he gets to Zamunda, he's all like, hey my man, what's up? And like acting like a buffoon a lot of the time. And like him and his mom are just like high-fiving each other in a royal court. And I just, I didn't buy that. Cause I was just like, you were like, yes ma'am, no sir, in a job interview. And like his uncle was like, don't use your white voice. No, he says, use your white voice. I thought I said don't. No, when he went in there, use your white voice. Anyway, he's just like, <laughs> he's like behaving like a professional person, like a well-behaved professional person in the beginning of the movie. And then the second he's introduced to like this royal court and he's like a prince and stuff, he's, he comes in acting like a complete jackass. Yeah. Um, that was the only thing that irritated me. Hmm. Leslie Jones was my least favorite part of this, but I didn't think anything that she did was funny in this yeah, movie. Yeah, but she wasn't in it a whole lot. She wasn't in a whole lot, but she the the moments that she was in there killed it for me. And like I said, like watching the original, the original had an edge to it. It was it, that's what sold me on the comedy in the first one. Dude, it was the, the sexual chocolate scene at the end. <laughs> <laughs> How funny was that? <laughs> that was good. The, the original was funny. This one, I don't know. All right, yeah, uh, yeah. My final thoughts on this, like I, I just it just didn't have the edge that I wanted. Like my name is Dolomite. That had an edge. That was hilarious. That was Eddie Murphy coming back. Fantastic. Uh, uh, Wesley Snipes in that movie was awesome. Uh, the original 1988 coming to America had a real hard edge to it. And that's what sold me on the, on the comedy. All the characters were over the top swearing at each other. It just, it was just so much fun to watch that movie. And then watching this one, I was like, it just didn't have the same effect on me. And I what just, was, was the first one R? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, this one didn't, I, I didn't laugh that much. There was a few scenes that I like Wesley Snipes again. He, he sells it for me and in, in all the scenes that he's in, but I don't know. I just didn't, I, don't, I just didn't laugh. I didn't think it was that good. I thought it was just a, a cheap remake of the first one with a bigger budget. That that's, that's all I can say about it. And if you guys hate me for it, that's fine. I don't hate you. <laughs> Vader, final thoughts. Um, 
I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, I laughed. It probably would have been funnier if they could have gone rated R. And, um, you know, made it a little edgier. Sure, I get that. But it was better than I expected. I had, like, I went into this thinking I was going to be annoyed, and, and I wasn't. I'm so, honestly, I'm shocked that you yeah, like it. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I, I generally enjoy Eddie Murphy movies, even bad ones. The dude makes me laugh, and, you know, there's a lot of funny people in this movie. Mm. And, they, and they did a good job. And um, it was it was good. I, I had a good time with it. I, I'll give it three stars. I wow. Mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Jude, final thoughts and give it a rating. I feel a lot of the same way that, that Vader does. Like I went into it thinking that it was going to be annoying and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah. I liked it. Am I raving about it? No. Um, it was a much more family-friendly version of – um, a coming to America movie because the first one is very um, tongue in cheek and raunchy, and it's definitely rated R. And this was rated PG thirteen, so I think that takes a lot of the edge that you were looking for off of it. Um, rating um, this is tricky. Uh, I guess I'll give it three three out of five uh, sequels. Okay, <laughs> thirty year later sequels. <laughs> okay, just final thoughts. Give it a rating. Um, I loved this movie. I had such a good time watching it. It brought back so much nostalgic feels for the original. Uh, all the characters came back, you know, sexual chocolate. My one criticism is that they didn't have like a, a soul glow thing. Like yeah. I would have I, I liked to have seen, um, what's his name? Eric something or other. He was what Dylan in the first movie, right? Or Daryl, the, the guy from Darryl. ER. Daryl. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to have seen him make an appearance or, or we, we, we did get like a little, soul glow nod because like there was like a theme song that played briefly at some point but would have liked to have seen that come back um everything with mcdowell's i loved it was so funny um i loved uh you know sexual chocolate the barbershop guys um the the creepy <laughs> preacher you know that came back um just the the musical numbers everything about this this movie that i loved in the first one came back tenfold in this one and I didn't mind that it wasn't as edgy as the first. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of weird because like when I was younger and watching the first one, you know, uh, I wasn't supposed to be watching an R-rated movie because it was so edgy. Now that I'm older, I can appreciate the restraint in, <laughs> in not like showing like the boobs and making like the raunchy jokes and stuff like that. So like, you know, you know it's like what bothered you about it, Alex, didn't bother me so much. And I just la like, I walked into this movie thinking I wasn't going to like it because I'd heard, you know, uh, bad I'm, things. That's, that's how we all, so, I am so all shocked were. that the two of you like this movie. Uh, it, well, it's amazing well, to me. I mean, like it was so true to the spirit of the original that right. I couldn't not like it. It was just like, in fact, they, they tried to get Samuel L. Jackson to come back because um, they wanted a gag about like, 30 years later, he's still Robin McDowell's. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, you know, like his shooting schedule just didn't allow it, but like they had written that into the script. And so like, there's just lots of little things like that that are part of this movie that I just, I, I love them. I love the new characters. I love the old characters. I loved everything about this film. It was a lot of fun. Hmm. Okay. Well, there you have it. That's our review of Coming to America. Yeah, I, I give it four out of five clean royal penises goodness gracious four out of five it's crazy okay cool hey we all have different opinions you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay yeah but, but right. watching the sequel before the original i just was wrong with to you? see i wanted to see if it would if it would stand on its own two Listen, feet the whole don't, point don't, is that it's a sequel don't try to be so movie snobby no i just i'm like can it can it be funny by itself you irritate me sometimes. Yeah, the answer too. was no the first that one was funny it doesn't have to first one was fantastic sequel is Watch the sequel. Five out of five for the first yeah, one. Yeah, it, it's like watching the two towers and being like, I don't get it. Why were they <laughs> going to the Mordor? God. <laughs> so ridiculous. It, it, it's it, like it, watching it, The Mummy 2 before you yeah, watch The Mummy. Yeah. It, 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 it's like watching Jurassic Park, The Lost World and being like, why are they in New York? <laughs> <laughs> it was San Francisco. Oh, wait. wait we asked that anyway. <laughs> Who's yeah. John Hammond? <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter. Why are there dinosaurs back? I, I don't, don't get, get that. It. I thought they all went extinct. Whatever. I had fun. I had fun. I watched the first, uh, the second one, then I watched the first one, and then I watched the second one again. And I had like a little coming to America sandwich. The second one just does not hold up. All right, guys, that's enough. That's enough. You guys can make fun of me later. Make fun of me in the comments. 
<laughs> Subscribe, hit the little bell notification, comment. Light them up. Let us know what you thought of coming to America. Send it to the internet. Oh, I, Send I, it I to have, the internet. I have a feeling. Put that. a hash brown on it. <laughs> I have a feeling there'll be more people out there that agree with you. Yeah, I just, I don't because know. We'll see. Prob you know, probably. There was a lot of hate for this People movie. in your age are dumb. The first one, never mind. We're done. We're done. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Real quick before we get out of here, where can we find everybody on the socials? Matt Vader, go ahead. <laughs> Ooh. You can find me at Matt Vader 74 on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, the YouTubes. And uh, Saturday mornings on the YouTube on our channel. That's right. Saturday yeah. morning, home, what is it called? Home Gang. Home Gang? Yeah. Right on. All right. Jude, where can they find you at? You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. Right on. And Matthew Kadish, where can they find you? You can find me at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H, on uh, Twitter and KadishBooks.com if you want to check out my books on Amazon. Right on. And I'm your host, Salty Nerd. You can catch me on Twitter at Salty underscore Nerd and uh, hang out with us, talk about movies. All right, guys, have a great day. And as always, stay salty, my friends. Mm -hmm.